Oh, hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Tapstream Podcast. Uh, thank you so much for listening. We're in week six, which is a really good feeling. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say right at the beginning, it's going to be a bit of a shorter one. Uh, I have spent the entirety of my weekend re disassembling and reassembling my stream setup. So, uh, you know, I'm getting in at the last hour here trying to get this recorded and edited and uploaded for the uh, for the week. Which uh, is not not a good first step because I've been preaching about how 2019 is going to be a really productive year for me and I'm taking less stream days to actually focus on other things. But time got away from me. So hopefully this won't be a trend and I will be able to put more energy into this because I do want to grow the podcast uh, and make it a bit of more bit more of a professional thing. Like I want to get uh, intro music, outro music, maybe some little jingles in between. I don't know. I'm speaking way ahead of myself here. But I will say this, uh, if you're familiar with the podcast, you know that I have a familiar format. I usually talk about what I've been playing, what I've been watching, and stream updates in some various order because it changes week to week. Uh, I can tell you now there's not going to be a what I've been playing section because I haven't gotten to anything new. I've still been playing Twilight Princess and I've been playing Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. So if you want to hear my thoughts on those, you can really just go back to the last couple episodes. Uh, nothing new has really changed as far as that goes. I can say this, though. Um, I ended up taking Monster Boy back to Gamefly. I mailed it off today. Um, so I don't know. As much as I wanted to get into that game, I just couldn't find it grabbing me. Um, so I sent it back. I have Mega Man 11, so I need to play through that. And my hope is that by Friday, this coming Friday, Super New Super Mario Brothers Deluxe uh, will be shipped to me. I haven't been getting lucky of getting games on the day of release from Gamefly. Fingers crossed I do because I'm really excited about checking this game out. So hopefully I'll have some more reviews for you on that next week. Um, but as far as like uh, what I've been watching, I have actually two movies this time. I finally got a chance to check out the movie Bird Box, which if you have been on the internet at any point in the last two weeks, I know you have seen advertisements for this. Uh, it's that new Sandra Bullock movie where it focuses on um, very similar to A Quiet Place with the sensory deprivation. Um, you know, humanity is attacked by these entities that are causing people to cause lethal damage to themselves and commit suicide once they are viewed so the way that our survivors cope with this is that they blindfold themselves and are now dealing in a new world where they cannot see outside really cool premise um like i said very draws similar comparisons to a quiet place with the quiet place the movie was you can't make a noise or they come running um so it's just a fun different take on that as far as i'm concerned unfortunately for Bird Box, um, A Quiet Place is just better in every regard. Uh, I talked about it with my cousin, and the biggest takeaway for me between these two movies is that A Quiet Place found ways to enrich its premise, and unfortunately, Bird Box feels like it works around its premise. So one of the biggest things that stood out to me about A about Bird Box is that it's told in a non-linear fashion. So that means we're getting two stories told at two different timelines that are slowly converging at, you know, a certain point in the film. This is fine. I'm, I, I have no problem with flashbacks, but unfortunately for Bird Box, the problem with that is that the most interesting parts are the ones that get the least amount of screen time. So that really, really hurts. Um, you know, we, the movie opens up and we're getting to know Sandra Bullock's character and establishing character development. And it's great. I mean, Sandra Bullock is Sandra Bullock. She's great in anything she does. But her entire character arc is very clumsy. Um, it, her character deals with the ramifications of, of, you know, expecting children and not ready to deal with motherhood. And so her journey as a character is getting us from point A of not wanting children to accepting children. You know, obviously with extreme circumstances, given what's happening in the movie. Um, and honestly, it just doesn't work. Uh, by the time we get to the end of the movie, it just feels like it was like, hey, we got to wrap this up. Let's just tie it up neatly and we're done. And that was incredibly unsatisfying. Um, you know, if it's if it didn't spend so much time feeling like a very very familiar survival slash zombie movie i think it would have been a little bit more interesting um i'm gonna delve a little into spoiler territory so i want to go ahead and give this warning i mean this is all stuff within the first five minutes of the film but 
I want to, I need to talk a little bit about it so that I can kind of make you understand what it is. I didn't like about this film. Um, the opening opening hook is that Sandra Bullock and two children of relationships. We don't know to her, um, are tasked with this journey of getting down river, a very, very rough flowing river to safety. And of course, because they can't see where they're going, they're blindfolded. They don't want to be attacked by whatever these entities are. It's going to be a very dangerous journey. Now that starts, everything's awesome. It's tense. It's, uh, it's thrilling and you're captivated by what is or isn't going to happen. And, uh, I like that. However, we flash back to the day of the attack and we learn about Sandra Bullock and then the attack happens and we spend a majority of the movie once Sandra Bullock gets to a safe house that she encounters the other new characters. From that point, it just feels like every zombie movie you've ever seen as far right down to the interrelation interpersonal relationships of like somebody who's so high strung that he doesn't want to let people in or the two young people that are like uh growing lovers and 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 whatnot like it just it's familiar um instead of doing anything cool with a premise we haven't really seen before we just get a lot of familiarity um if it were up to me and i hate i hate always judging a movie by what it could have been versus what it actually presents but it's hard in this scenario if it was up to me i would have seen this movie make more of a focus on that journey from upriver to downriver um and find ways to interwork its theme of motherhood into that. I think that movie would have been a lot better um, because as it stands, unfortunately, Bird Box is just a, a no for me. I uh, I did not like it. But I mean, it's Netflix. If you have a membership, check it out. It's not the worst movie you're ever going to see. It's definitely lacking. Um, and I'd like to hear what you think about it. Did you like Bird Box? Um, or, or you, do you agree with me? Uh, let me know at the tap stream on any social media platform, or if you want to email me at ask the tap at gmail.com. All right. For the second movie, I, uh, I went to the theaters and I got to see Bumblebee, uh, the new transformers movie, which for all intents and purpose is a reboot, except a name. Um, I swore off transformer movies after revenge of the fallen. Uh, I remember being in a theater and I was so excited. Like I, I went with, I took my younger cousin. I went with my sister and, and, you know, then not quite brother-in-law yet. He, you know, they were still dating at the time. Not important. We, I took them and I was so excited and we get there and I just remember being embarrassed, like straight up embarrassed in the theater because the movie was just that bad. And the part that broke me, the part that broke me is I remember sitting in the theater for Transformers Revenge of the Fallen and there is this giant transformer that is like climbing up a pyramid and the camera cuts to the genitals of the transformer and you just see two big like balls moving around and it was that moment that i was like i'm done i'm not watching these movies i don't know what these movies are trying to be but i know that i'm not the target demographic and so i never watched another transformer movie after that however after much praise and many close friend suggestions i went and saw bumblebee and it has completely won me over. Um, I really, really enjoyed my time with Bumblebee. Um, to me, the movie like recognizes its strength in nostalgia of the 80s and adolescence, uh, which honestly makes sense. I mean, Transformers was at the height of its popularity in the 80s. I believe that's when the cartoon like started in 1985, I think. Feel free to correct me. Um, so yeah, that just makes perfect sense. And it almost makes you wonder why the first Transformer movie wasn't set during that time um and so you know with this focus and nostalgia um it, it it creates a feeling of of warmth and i like that um the movie isn't focused on anything more than the di- dynamic between bumblebee and charlie aka Haley steinfeld and and it works um this streamlined story is thin admittedly but it's enough to get you into it needs to happen like you know it's enough to have the fun action scenes that are actually coherent and easy to understand what's going on and have this weight to them that actually makes it feel like bumblebee and the adversaries are real um 
you know, it gets you to these points of emotional connection between Charlie and Bumblebee when Charlie starts to open up about her past as a character. And even though we don't get enough setup for these moments, Haley Steinfeld is a incredibly charismatic actress and she sells these relatable moments well. Um, you know, it can be awkwardly paced, but uh, it's 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 fine. I mean, your mileage may vary depending on how much you are a fan of nostalgia infused storytelling, but I enjoyed it. It's not setting out to do much, but what it does, it does really well. Um, and for me, honestly, the opening scene that takes place on, I don't actually don't know if I want to go down this regardless i'll say this because i don't want to get into spoilers the the opening scene is enough for me to want more movies even movies that may be set prior to this movie or movies that take place after this movie because it just does a lot well um i'm totally on board i uh i I can't believe i'm saying it but i really really want more transformer movies as long as it's travis knight i believe is the actor and uh this established universe all right so like i said it's a bit of a shorter Shorter what I've been watching lately, but uh, I'm just trying to get in and get out real quick. I do want to go ahead and leave some of these stream updates because uh, we do have we have had some new things going on right now. Um, if you listen to any of the podcasts before, I've talked about that I'm going down to three streams a week versus the six streams a week that I, I have been doing for, you know, almost two and a half years. Um, and I just wanted to give a little bit of feedback on how that's going. I um, I'm still anxious about it because it feels like I'm taking away from people that watch. But after Wednesday's stream, I could feel the difference. Um, I felt, and this is going to be kind of patting my own back, I felt electric. Like, I, I got in on the stream, and I was energetic, and I was fun, and it just, you know, jokes were coming to me a lot quicker, and I was I felt wittier and quicker on the response, and it was just a really, really fun time. Um, if taking this time off to focus on other things and then come back for, like, three really good streams is well let me rephrase this if that's an indication of what taking time off and coming back to just doing three really well good streams is going to be i'm excited because i felt awesome in these last three three streams um you know i don't think there i think it was a subconscious coincidence that the first saturday off that i've had um just so happened to be when i deconstructed my stream desk because even if i wanted to on saturday night i couldn't have streamed um and believe me i wanted to i was just kind of like pacing this room back and forth thinking like well okay maybe if i get this computer part set up and this and that i can just do a little quiet stream and blah 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 and but no thankfully i i i just stuck to my guns i didn't stream even though i i, I wanted to um and we'll see how it plays out on tuesday um You know, and again, numbers are always a weird thing to talk about. I don't like doing it, but another thing kind of going in the favor of of this new strategy, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm sorry, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday streams number wise have been great. Average wise, it's like the best that I've been doing. And um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that continues, if that continues to grow or if it was just a momentary spike, who knows? Streaming is weird. Anytime I get to like talking about streaming with other peers and, and streamers, it, the m- number one thing I always find myself saying is that streaming is weird. You're never going to have con- consistency number wise. Um, so that's why you yourself are the only consistent thing that you can have. Um, what would I say? Man, I'm saying a lot of ums. This is not good. This is not a good episode. Episode six, not the, the best one so far. But hey, that's why we're going to do this again next week so we can be better. <sighs> I had a point to say, but I can't remember what I was going to say. Mm. Oh, yeah. Another big thing. Uh, this is coming out on Monday. So if you were listening to this on the day, uh, I'm not streaming today, but on Tuesday, January 8th, uh, streams will be starting at 530 p.m. Central Standard Time, which is a whole two hours earlier than I normally start. And uh, that's exciting to me. Uh, one of the, the trade-offs of doing lesser streams is that I'm going to do longer streams and I can't wait to see how that experiment takes off. Um, you know, I, I think I like the idea of longer streams more than, and varied, not varied, longer streams more than many streams. Um, just because it gives me more one-on-one interaction with people. Um, streaming is always a moving window. So the larger you can make that window at a time, you know, only it can only lead to good things, right? 
All right, clearly this is not a good podcast. I'm going to go ahead and, and unfortunately wrap it up earlier than usual. It's going to be the shortest one we've done so far, but hey, like I said, we'll be back next week. So I do want to go ahead and say this. If I had to pick a highlight of the week, I think clearly the highlight of the week for me would be probably Wednesday stream. Like I said, I felt really electric on that day and having taken an extended amount of time off and especially being the first stream back from the 24 hour stream. I felt good and it felt good to catch up with everybody and, and, uh, see what everybody was up to and how everybody's getting starting in the new year. Um, so yeah, I, I, I look back on Wednesday stream with big fondness. So I want to turn that question to you. What's been the highlight of your week? Uh, make sure that you tweet it to any social media platform. I guess not any social media platform. If you tweet it, make sure that you at me at any social media platform with the hashtag, the tap stream highlight. I'll find it. Let me know what made you really happy this week. Um, you know, I always l love hearing what people are excited about. That makes me excited and it can just be this never ending loop of excitement. Um, and if you enjoyed this podcast, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, star, whatever it is that you do on your particular platform of choice. Um, you know, it, it helps. I, I, as far as I understand from every podcast I hear, whenever you do that and show positive feedback, that makes the podcast providers put your podcast higher up for people to see. So that, that helps a lot. Um, if you enjoyed me personally, you can find me at the tap stream on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Snapchat, everywhere, doing all the things, usually posting bite-sized content of the stream. So it's a lot easier to digest than five hour increments. Um, and of course on Twitter, I, I post a lot more of my thoughts and musings. So if you don't like waiting for the weekly podcast to get my movie or TV reviews, you can find them there. Uh, we also have a website, thetapstream.com, which is slowly under renovation. Uh, I've been updating the podcast page a bit. Uh, I've finally written a blog after months of not doing one. And um, yeah, it's going to be under some renovation, but you can you can go there right now to go get an idea of what it is I do stream wise. Um, and actually, if you want to be a part of the community, that is amazing. Go to the tapstream.com and look to the menu bar. You will see a link called Discord. If you click that, it'll give you a link to the Discord where you can come and join. It's open for everybody. All you need is a Discord account, and uh, we'd welcome you with open arms. So yeah, again, I do want to go ahead and, and pro apologize. I know this isn't the greatest, greatest episode so far, but like I said, next week's another chance. So until then, I love your faces. Keep celebrating. Stay happy, and I will. Uh, I'll see you around. Oh, wait, no, I always forget. I keep forgetting this. This is like one of the big things I wanted to do. Uh, one of the one of the things that makes me feel better about doing podcasting is that one of the vice, advices I've gotten from Professor Broman in his podcast is that if you don't know what to do for a podcast, do a QA. and a So this is what I'm opening up to you. Ask the tap at gmail.com. If you have any question regarding any subject, as long as it's within reasonable, reasonable appropriateness, I will answer it. I'm opening up my emails to you. So, uh, yeah. I'll check it. You got a question for me? Send it there. I'll look for it, and I will. Uh, I will answer it here. But until then, I love your faces. Bye, bye, everybody. <laughs>